Okay guys, so today we've got a Catalano Basin here. It's the best of the best, in my opinion. The Catalano product is awesome. Now, what we have here is a blank, so it can create a shelf. Um, that would be if you want to bench mount it or if you want to wall mount it. We've got some holes here that we can knock through and if you wanted to have a wall mounted mixer it would come straight out here uh, and that would be left as a shelf now in this particular case we have the customer wanting a tap a single tap here so we've got to create a tap hole now in our workshop we have a special wall mounted drill that we can put this in and it just takes it straight through this is our basin drill here if you need to send your basin back to get drilled, it's not a problem. We have the perfect setup here. Now, if you are out on site, you haven't got a diamond drill or anything like that, uh, these have the ability to be punched through. Now, it does sound quite daunting, taking a hammer and a punch and just punching the surface of a brand new, high quality, expensive basin but I'm here to tell you today that it can be done. So let's just go ahead. What I'm gonna do is to use just standard tools that you would have in a normal builder's apron. Uh, so here's a punch, and we've got the old trusty hammer. So those two, um, and then I've just got a whiteboard marker, so that's, that's not real important. Uh, whiteboard marker is, is fine, or otherwise just a biro pen will, will work. And lastly, a tape measure. So here we have the tape measure. Now what we're going to do is, now it's pretty simple, it's going to be a centre tap hole. So measuring from here to here, uh, we just take the centre. So what have we got? We've got 250mm. Uh, so let's mark the centre. The centre, and this doesn't have to be super accurate. Here we go, 125. So that's our centre. Now we're going to have to get the distance from here to here. Now it's not in the centre, so what we do first, place a nice something that's nice and soft. So if you tip the basin over, it's not going to scratch the uh, top of it. So you can see here, we've got this plug that's been pre-formed or pre-punched by the factory, and then they glaze over the top of it so you don't see it. Now this is great because it means that this plug here is actually easy to knock out so what we're going to do is we're going to measure from this side here the outside of it to the middle of the hole now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to literally just use my eye this is how easy it is and I'll, I'll show you why later on it's not super important to be accurate I'll just lift the basin up so you can see in the camera Calculate by looking straight down. I reckon it's about 60 millimeters. So 60 mil from there to the center of the hole. Now let's flip that back the other way. I've got to lost my mark there, but it's, it's okay. We'll redo that. So we've got 60 millimeters, and you'll notice that it's not actually. We've got what we got 40 mil from the edge of the basin to that line and then from the outside edge there's 60 mil so that's important to to note this whereabouts this this center is here but obviously this other center here again we've got 250 mils just remark that right so there's our center Radio. so <clears throat> this is, can be the daunting part if you haven't done this before now what we've got here this is just literally a nail punch it's quite well worn as you can see it's over the years it's got quite rounded off but it should be fine if you have a standard nice sharp uh, nail punch so what you're going to do is place the punch straight in the center and simply give it a tap rightio so what that's done now is that's chipped off a wee bit of the the glazing which is fine because we're going to have a, a taps tap flange is probably roughly about that size uh, and if we just turn it over now you'll notice that the plug's gone and most of the the 
outside edge is gone. So the, the most of the plug's gone there, which will just move away. So you just gotta be very careful. Probably should be wearing gloves. Well, this is just a quick demo. So what we're gonna do now is simply just chip around that hole like so. So what I do here is I use my small finger as kind of a kind of a spring, kind of a bouncing arrangement here. So so I, I hold it elevated just above the hole, and when I t uh, when I hit the punch, it'll spring back up because I'm just as keeping the I'm just keeping it off the surface. So if you go like this, you'll notice that the punch will just spring back up. And if you do notice here, as I'm just going around slowly and carefully around the edge of the hole, it's just literally just tipping it out. Camera shake because it's on the same pitch. It's not bad. So I would recommend to wear gloves uh, due to the fact that glaze is glass. It's made of the same stuff. It's silica, which is sand, uh, and it can be incredibly sharp. I've got a few cuts in the past, but uh, like I say, gloves is best um, for safety. Now we use a ball peen hammer because it's just easier. Because once you get to this size, you can then carefully chip with the ball peen part of it round, and um, clean up the hole a wee bit. And you'll notice that it's it was chipping before, but now it's not. It's got, it's got a quite a. It's very very strong round here because that's the full thickness of the of the basin. Whereas where it was quite thin, it sort of shattered a bit. So that, that that should be that should be absolutely fine. You've got yeah, this particular hole here that we've just cut. We've only got thirty millimeter hole, so that's enough for a standard basin mixer with two hoses to come through. That so that's absolutely fine. Be perfect. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and just chip a little bit more off. The reason why I'm doing it where I'm doing it is because you can see in here where you've done it. So that's not quite the width of the, the original punched hole from the factory when the clay was wet, but that should be absolutely fine as long as you don't you use a ball peen hammer and just, just clean up the edges so that they're not too sharp, then you, away you go, you can put your basin mixer in. Now the same goes for these uh, these here, the, the fixing holes. If that, so if I was going to punch out, if I was going to use this for a, a right hand basin, what we call a right hand basin, I'd punch out the holes in this side. If I was going to use it for a left hand side basin, I'd punch out this, these holes. And that's for the bolt set, which I'll show you. You can see there and here. So they also have pre-punched from the factory, pre-punched uh, holes in the clay. So hopefully that's helpful, and yes, it is a little bit daunting. Well, essentially smacking a hole in the a brand new basin, expensive basin, but it's able to be done. As you could see, how easy it was. If you need any more help or tips, tricks, let me know. It's Arnie at Plumline. Thanks for watching.